Hi everyone, welcome back. It's really good to see you again. So you may remember that a few weeks ago I decided to spruce up my bedroom by giving it a fresh lick of paint. This is the result. As you can remember, if you watch the video, I was very happy with it. It's just made the bedroom look a bit more moody. It's given it a little bit more personality. It was white before, which was okay, it was bright, but it was a little bit boring and it wasn't really a room that I felt I could relax in. So I did paint the room, happy with the result. But now it's time to kind of do a few more things to spruce it up and just bring more character to it. So as you can see, it's quite plain in here. Some of the things I have, I've had them for a long time, and even though I still like them, for example, these floral lamps, they're not really me now, and I want to bring something modern and fresh into the room. As you can see, I've got a new bed, which I think has really changed the room even more. The last headboard was very low. This is higher, it's more dramatic, and it's new, so it just looks more fresh. So now I'm going to head to the stores and see what I can find just to add some accessories into the room and change it even slightly. So this isn't going to be a huge dramatic makeover, but I wanted to show you how you can add little things to the bedroom to just give it a little bit of a makeover. So things like lamps, cushions, throws and artwork and how it really changes up a room for the better. So I'm going to head over to the stores, see what I can find. My budget is very low and tight, so nothing expensive, but I wanna show you that you can buy things that are not too expensive and still make a big impact in the room. So let's do it. So I had a really fun time shopping in some of the stores and we've got a little shopping centre quite close to Edinburgh which is about 20 minutes away and I managed to find everything in one store except for this little waste paper, waste paper bin. So that is pretty handy. I knew I would be able to find most of the stuff that I wanted. I went to HomeSense which is part of TK Maxx and even though I wouldn't want to shop the whole of my home from there you can find some really nice pieces that just inject some style and some interest into an interior. So the first thing that I noticed were these cushions, like bolster cushions. I loved these because they've got kind of like a boucle effect, like a Chanel jacket, and they've got this green, these green tones in them, which goes well with the wall colouring. I kind of like them because they're a little bit shabby in a way so they don't look too perfect and what they do is they will add a lot of texture into the bedroom at the minute it's quite plain soft this will add some roughness and some texture but also the softness of them is very comforting so a mix of comfort and roughness which will really bring some nice texture into the room next i found these two lamps you can see that this is like a greeny yellow glass and it's got this nice linen frame. Quite simple, but I think effective. And this was a real bargain at £39.99 for the each. So £80 about in total. Lamps really make a room. They can change up a room quite dramatically. So I think this more modern contemporary style will work great in the room. And finally, I got this green throw blanket. It's got nice texture in it. Again, I really love these soft textures with the grains in them, green again. This will just drape over the bed in a nice way and just add again more texture. And when you've got a white duvet that's quite prominent in a room where you have a huge span of white, sometimes good to break it up with a little throw or a blanket like this one. And then I just got a little waste paper bin for my bathroom. I have one in there now, but I wanted something a little bit more chic. And this was a real steal at only three pounds.
So, I've been thinking about some artwork for my bedroom, and even though I'm not sure whether I'm going to use this for the bedroom, this is quite a special thing because you may recognize this as being the main piece of artwork on the Nicholas Fairford Botanic Candle. This has been designed by an illustrator called Israel de Alcantara. We worked together and he created this illustration for me for this candle. So I thought that it'd be very nice to use the original print and have it framed. And I'm really excited to tell you that we're going to be launching these on our website, nicholasfairford.com. So you'll be able to order the print without a frame. It will, become sh it will come shipped in a little tube and you'll be able to buy a frame of your choice and have the print, which I think is just gorgeous. The detail in this, I'm not sure whether you can see it on camera, but it is very detailed gorgeous, exquisite, and it just adds a real pop of colour to a room in a beautiful way. So these are going to be released quite soon. If you want to be the first to know when they are going to be released for sale, you will need to sign up to the newsletter on nicholasfairford.com as our newsletter subscribers always get first refusal on these items and they're always the first to be notified about new product launches. Also, if you're signed up to Patreon, you'll also get a notification. So if you do want to know about the prints, which a lot of people have been asking me about for quite some time, then please do that, sign up and you'll be informed. But we'll also be having another version of a print, not, the, not this flower, but a leaf as well, which looks quite beautiful. It's quite a striking colour and it complements this, but also adds an air of masculinity to it as well, as this is quite a feminine print. So I'm just going to try it in the bedroom now to see if it works. It might not, but if not, then it will go somewhere else because I think it's such a statement and, it, and also something that's very special to me. So I'm really happy with the way that the bedroom has turned out. As you can see, it's just very small changes. I haven't really added that much to it and I've hardly spent any money, just over a hundred pounds on all those little t touches and details. So it's very, very inexpensive just to spruce it up a little bit. But I am very happy with, yes, how it's turned out. And I think it's made a big change, even though it's just small little touches. And what I think about decorating is that it is a process and that it isn't ever finished so as the weeks months even years go on I will definitely be adding more to this room I think the back wall is a little bit plain a little bit bare the print didn't really work here on its own I need to get the other print framed and then I'll probably add them maybe above the bed but I'll see I also want to add a little bit more texture here the cushions on the bed have made me think how much I really enjoy texture in a room I would even go as far to say that maybe I want to add some rugs in here as well. Maybe a little touch of red with some kind of Turkish style rugs. But again, I'm not going to decide fully. I'm just going to see and have a look around. Yes, I think these little changes have made a big impact. I'm feeling like it's a more cosy room to relax and rest in. I think it looks quite stylish and elegant. So I'm very, very happy with the result, but I'd love to know what you think in the comments, as always. One thing that I am pretty certain about is that I do love these really earthy, moody greens, and I think it's a great palette for my home. I think my style has evolved a lot over the last few years, and this very pared back, elegant style is something that I'm really enjoying. I mean, for me, this room looks pretty much done. I like the simplicity of it. I like that it's simple and neutral, but still calmingly elegant. But yeah, let's see how it turns out and how it evolves. It's always the most exciting part of decorating a home. So I'm going to bake one of my favorite things, which is an almond tea loaf. Now this is a very easy bake. It's just got a few ingredients and that is it. But the reason why I wanted to bake it is because I have my almond tea, which has been a little bit of a bestseller for me. Everybody loves it. And what they say is that the fragrance inside this pouch is heavenly. And I have to say, it is the most wonderful fragrance 
I'm a huge fan of almonds, so I'm going to say that, but it really is. So I'm just going to incorporate this into the recipe very simply by adding a few of the leaves on top of our glaze, on top of the loaf. And that is the main reason why I wanted to do an almond tea loaf is because I wanted to use the tea. So I'm going to bake that and then I'm going to serve the tea with our loaf. Okay, so this is very simple, as I said. As with most of these loaf recipes, we're gonna start by adding in the butter and the sugar, and then we are going to beat these together using the paddle attachment on our mixer until it is fluffy and creamy. So let's do that. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'm just gonna scrape down the sides with this spatula. And then we're gonna move on to the next stage. stage. Now, I don't know about you, but here in Edinburgh, the weather is just absolutely beautiful over the last few days. We've had gorgeous sunshine, even though it's really, really cold. It's absolutely stunning. <laughs> The skies are so blue and the sun is just shining beautifully, so it really lifts the mood and uh, gets you in the mood for spring. I'm, I'm always excited about spring, it's probably my favourite time of year. So now I've got three eggs and I'm just going to add these in. And now I'm going to use our whisk attachment and beat this together. So as you can see, all very simple, very easy. Not rocket science, but you will end up with something delicious. Okay, that's looking very good. Now I'm gonna add in uh, almond extract and uh, vanilla extract can smell the almond again. So beautiful. And now I'm just going to add in a uh, flour. I'm just going to put it all in. That's what the recipe says to do. And then we've got some baking powder and some salt. And now we've got some milk. And we're just going to beat this all together until fully combined. And that is just how simple this is. Nice and quick, nice and easy, but with a wonderful result. And your friends will think that you've made a huge effort for them to bake them a loaf, an almond loaf. And really it's very simple and easy, which is what I always like. What's not so simple is getting this on. Okay, let's go. Okay, I think we're done. It's all combined. Quite a lot of batter, actually. I think that I'm gonna divide this between two of my loaf tins and make two loaves, and I'll just freeze one and save it for later on because this is just a lot of, this is a lot of batter. I think maybe that the loaf tin that they use in the recipe is a lot bigger than this. Okay, so I lined this earlier and now we're just going to pour this in. Don't want to overfill it because I think it will rise. And I've done that before, made that mistake where I've overfilled a pan, a, a tin, a loaf tin, and you end up having something huge. And that is it, we're ready to bake it in the oven. Simple. The glaze for this loaf is very simple. It's just one cup of powdered sugar, half a teaspoon of almond extract, 
and two tablespoons of milk or orange juice. I used milk. And then I'm adding my Nicholas Fairford almond tea loose leaf, and I'm just gonna sprinkle some of this on top. It will intensify the almond flavor and also add a crunch. So delicious. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me. I really hope that you have enjoyed this episode and found it fun, useful, and interesting. As always, I look forward to seeing you next time, but until then, take care. Bye bye. <laughs>